Okay. So again, thank you all for being here. I'm Susie Bruce. I'm director of the Gordy Center at the University of Virginia. And we have been, we developed um, the Apple Training Institute and we've been hosting it for over 30 years. We're really excited for you to join us. If you are um, someone who has attended Apple in the past, I'm just giving you a heads up. At the end of the session, we're gonna have an opportunity um, to share. Again, either you can unmute or you can use the chat. Um, we would love to hear your advice for the first time schools um, of what um, maybe you wish you'd known the first time you came or what's your um, experience from coming multiple times of like how to have a successful team, how to build a team, how to have a good experience while you're at Apple. Um, I think that's always great um, for participants to share with others. Um, so what we're going to cover in this um, 35 minutes or so of content, and then again, we'll have time for Q&A is information for both of our training institutes for 2024. Um, you have either signed up to be with us at our home in Charlottesville, Virginia, um, or um, in Newport Beach, California. So with that, we're gonna get rolling. We're gonna use something called Menti to have a little bit of interaction. It's a tool that we use um, a lot and we will be using um, at Apple as well. You can either use your phone um, and pull up that QR code, um, or you can open up, if you got two screens like me, you can open up another tab, uh, go to menti.com and then enter that code. Uh, the way Menti works, if you haven't used it before, is it allows you to put in information anonymously. We're gonna have some like little polls. There'll be opportunities if you wanna have like a short answer or ask a question, but it's completely anonymous. Um, when we do this with students, we're always like, hey, truth or nothing, don't mess with us. Um, but it's a really nice uh, platform. And when you're on your phone, you'll actually see all of our slides um, on your phone as well. But uh, you, and if you miss this, because I'm going to move on to the next slide in a moment, anytime you see um, a Menti question, you can log in. So if you lose your connection, you can log back in. It's not like some of the programs where um, if you don't answer one's question, you can't as answer any of the ones in the future. So with that, um, we'll go ahead because my very first question is a Menti question. So curious, um, who is a first time Apple attendee and who maybe attended, but with a different school, or are you returning with your same school and you're like, I kind of got this and my team kind of knows what we're doing. So we'll give folks a moment to click in. And um, so pretty typical, we usually have, um, you know, about double the number of schools um, that are first time Apple attendees. Um, so um, we're excited. And again, those of you that have come before, a little heads up at the end, we would really love to hear your expertise. And I know our first time attendees would also like to hear that. So first of all, I want to um, recognize our home here at the University of Virginia. As I mentioned, we created the Apple model that is the core of the Apple Training Institute. And, and yes, we have a lot of Apple puns throughout this. Um, and our sponsor and our funder um, is the NCAA, particularly the Sports Science Institute um, is where our funding comes from um, for all of those 30 plus years. And the NCAA provides over 90% of the cost of our training institute. Um, we have a number of educational partners. We've been working with drug-free sports for decades, as well as the University of North Carolina at Greensboro and their Center for Athlete Wellbeing. Um, and we have some new formal partners um, this year, uh, the Higher Education Center um, at The Ohio State University, which is a national resource if you're familiar with them. Um, Responsibility.org, particularly their Alcohol 101 program, um, and then Game Plan, um, which provides educational content um, for not only um, collegiate programs, but also um, for professional sports. As I mentioned, um, those of you that will be coming uh, to UVA, although we're not staying in the Rotunda, um, we're close by. Uh, since 1992, we've been hosting these um, training institutes nationally. And we changed our name back in about six years ago to the Training Institute. And it's um, important for you to know that, you know, we, we are sort of like a conference but really we have a set curriculum. So if you have come before, um, some of the content's gonna look similar. We're always looking for new data to add, but it is sort of like if you took a class um, one semester and then took it again the next year, you're gonna see like, oh, some of this is similar, but it's of course gonna change based on 
the people that are there, um, the new students, the new administrators that you're bringing. And then we do have sort of our electives, our Saturday afternoon when we have our breakout sessions. Um, and we're excited to welcome you to our Apple family. As you see, over half, um, you know, over 60% of NTA member schools have attended. So the Apple model, we will get into much more in depth, obviously, while you're there, but just to kind of give you a little overview, we really have seven different areas um, where your campus athletics department can impact substance misuse among your student athletes. And so for each of those seven, we have detailed guiding principles. In other words, what would be the model perfect program? Um, and then, you know, what does that look like? And we'll be sharing some examples of how schools have improved those different areas over the weekend. So what is it going to do for you? Um, we've got some fun pictures, mostly just from um, this March when we had our training institute. So, um, you know, the big focus is substance misuse. Um, it's really about education, getting accurate information. We're here to empower your teams. We're here, we're here to help you network with other campuses, um, whether they are, you know, 30 miles away or on the other side uh, of the country, as well as networking with our national partners. Um, and then we provide coaching for you for the next year. So there'll be some check-ins um, to really help you be as successful as possible. I'm not going to read all these learning outcomes. We have them on our website. We'll post these PDFs uh, later as well. But I want to highlight just two of them. Um, we know um, from our outcome research that you really will increase your ability to in impact substance misuse um, problems on your within your athletic department um, and within your campus overall. Because that last bullet point is by the time you leave, we will help you create a really tight, clearly defined, measurable action plan. So when you leave Apple, you're going to know what are we going to focus on over the next year. What happens over the course of the weekend? You're going to hear us talk a lot about this measurable action plan because it really is the most important part of the whole weekend. And we work really hard to help you be successful in creating one um, that you can uh, be successful in implementing. So what should you be doing right now? Um, really, it is building up your Apple team. Uh, we request that you have all of your team together in a little over two weeks. Um, we know some of you have just registered. Um, so here's our um, suggestions. First of all, you are required to have at least four people on your team, but you can bring up to six. Two of those team members must be student athletes that have eligibility through the next year. Obviously, the reason for that is you bring them in January if they're seniors and they don't have eligibility left, they're going to be gone. Um, you're going to have all of this excitement, all of this knowledge, and then you're going to lose it. And you've got that full year to implement your action plan. You do have to have at least one person be a full-time employee. That's generally your team contact. Um, and that's just really because um, sometime in the past, we had a grad student be sent as their primary team contact. And that um, was just really challenging for them. They're, they're part-time and they don't necessarily have all those connections. So um, grad students are welcome to be part of the team. Just make sure you've got your team contact who's a, a full-time employee. As you're figuring out who do we invite, who do we bring, you know, look at a variety of perspectives, um, skills. So try not to have all, you know, volleyball players or maybe all football players, um, you know, look at, is there another administrator you want to bring? Um, maybe that's a health educator. Like it, it's a really great opportunity if you're within athletics to be like, you know, we've really been wanting to partner with somebody. Um, and this could be a really nice way um, to build those relationships. Obviously your athletic trainers, we do offer CEUs um, for athletic trainers, your faculty athletics representative, other student affairs folks. So just really think broadly about who would be um, good folks to have as part of your team. And we really think it's critical, is your team representative of your department and of your school? And you know, look at um, gender, ethnicity, again, different kinds of teams, et cetera. So just be really intentional as you're trying to build your team. So another fun little mentee question. This is just helping us on our planning. We know you can bring four or five or six people. Uh, do you have a sense um, how many people you're thinking you might bring? Again, 
your $400 registration fee covers hotel rooms and all the meals. So your cost really is, you know, can you get six people together and, you know, the travel. So if you're looking at flights, that might be an extra expense for you, but everything else, once you show up is covered for you. So, um, all right. So looks like a lot of people are bringing six. So that's awesome. We're really excited. Um, after the 16th, we'll start reaching out. We'll give you the list of who has registered as a team contact. So you can also let us know, oh no, more people are supposed to be signing up, but that's really helpful information for us. So one of the things that we developed several years ago was some homework. Um, this is meant to be a small task, but again, if you've got six people and you're developing a plan, maybe this is your first time, it's really nice to get the ideas from other people as well. So we just suggest everybody on your team, talk to five people. This doesn't have to be formal, um, but students talk to other student athletes, administrators, maybe, you know, check in with some coaches and just say, what do, what's their thought? What are some of the biggest issues? Because that will help guide some of your discussions while you're at Apple. So here's a big thing that's also coming up um, in a little over two weeks is our um, baseline assessment instrument. So I mentioned um, that that is based on our Apple model and filling this out on time allows us to analyze the data and get it back to you because that'll be part of your um, action plan. So here's a little bit more about it. Um, each of those slices of the Apple model um, have a set of questions. They're a little bit repetitive, um, which is why we have sent you, or if you're just registering, we will send you a PDF of the entire survey. It is important though that you use the online assessment to complete it. Please don't fill it out on the PDF um, uh, because that we have it somewhat automated. It might take you 45 minutes to complete this. However, talk with you know, um, your compliance people, because some of it will be, if you have a policy, when you created it, when was it updated, who's monitoring it. So we only need one submission for campus. And we really encourage you, it, it's really rare that one person would know all the answers for everything. Um, again, we'll have a blank copy. Um, you got the confirmation email after your initial registration one. So we'll send that out to you. We also this year created a little short 12 minute video that kind of walks you through the process, gives you some helpful hints. That's already on our website. Um, by I think Friday of this week, we will send another email to all team contacts to let you know where this recording is, where the PDFs that we're watching right now are and a link to that video. So um, again, we will send you confidential results prior to Apple. So you will have just your school's results um, how you kind of scored, what were the reasons, and that's something you can share with the rest of your team before you attend that. Another, again, we're having the same deadline for everything, but this is a fun one. Um, on Saturday afternoon, we have 30-minute sessions where schools get to share their success. Um, so, and even if you're like, I don't know that we have anything in particular, really, it's like 20 minutes of presentation time and 10 minutes of Q&A. And schools really find this helpful to hear what did, um, what's going really well. Maybe it's your a student athlete mentor program. Maybe you spent a year working on policy development and what went well and what you do different. So anything around that, particularly if you've come before um, and implemented an action plan, uh, but people just love to hear that. And if you can get students to help present, all the better. Usually we will have students saying, oh, this was fun. We're coming back next year and we want to present. So again, that is also a deadline. This is just a little bit of a heads up. We are using an Apple app again, and a lot of content will be in there. So you will see those emails in January. This is just a, a reminder that we're going to do that. Um, and in addition to our print booklets, we heard you, um, those of you that came last year, we didn't do print booklets. We will have both uh, this year, but just a fun thing. So a little bit about our hotels. Um, if you're staying with us in Charlottesville, it's the same hotel we've been using for many years, uh, the Doubletree. And we do have a, um, it's very close to the uh, airport in Charlottesville. You, If you're driving, um, there's no charge to park at the hotel. Um, if 
you get on a look at flights, you might be able to get cheaper flights um, from Dulles International Airport up, uh, in the DC area, and that's about a two hour drive. And at Newport Beach, uh, we're at um, near another airport. So we're near the John Wayne Airport. They do have co complimentary transportation. So if you're flying into that airport, you can use a free shuttle. Um, we got a discount on parking, but we only got it down to $30 a night if you're driving in. Um, they do have um, a great fitness center. The outdoor pool is heated. Um, and they have a really nice market. Um, so again, if you come in really early or you're staying kind of late on Sunday, um, they have fresh coffee and some baked goods and sandwiches and things. So that's good. Nice. It's the same hotel we stayed at in 2020 if you joined us there. So for both of our hotels, um, it is double occupancy for Friday and Saturday night. So administrators, don't worry. Students will be housed with other student athletes. You will be housed with another administrator. So in your individual registration form, you can indicate your roommate. Um, if you don't indicate a roommate, um, you will be assigned a roommate of the same sort of type, student to student. Um, if you want a single room, you can certainly pay for that. Um, that's not part of our grant. Um, and occasionally we'll have schools that the timing just doesn't work out. So they need to come in Thursday night. So we will extend the conference rate um, for Thursday night and we will set that up with you. So we do have um, a way, and you can see really the we're just passing along the cost of the room and taxes onto you. So if you want to get that extra room, the most important thing is please do not contact the hotel. Um, you can include that in your registration or you can just contact us directly. Um, we'll make all of those room reservations. We'll send you the link for separate payment, um, but everything will go on our master bill. So you'll pay us and then we'll pay the hotel. We know um, athletes like to eat. So we really pride ourselves on having good food and lots of it. We provide all the meals from Friday dinner to Sunday breakfast, including a hot breakfast. They will get eggs and bacon and pancakes or uh, French toast. We have a snack break on Saturday afternoon. Um, we work very hard with our hotel catering staff to make sure any dietary needs are met. We always have substantial vegetarian options. Um, and as long as folks let us know in advance, um, that is part of the individual registration. We work really hard. We will meet, meet those dietary needs, um, but we do need advance notice. Um, so especially let your student athletes know they can't tell us the day they come in. That we'll work hard, but that, that may be more challenging. So if you're here with us, we're pretty sure you're coming, but um, occasionally um, things happen. So we just want to make sure this is part of registration, but our cancellation policy. Um, if it's before December 1, then that $400 registration fee um, is refundable um, or you can apply it to next year. However, um, because we're getting really close after December 1, um, that's a forfeit of the registration fee. And because we have to confirm everything with our hotels by December 11th, um, any cancellation after that, either an individual or a team, is a $200 per person cancellation fee because we've already locked in the rooms and the meals, and we're required to pay them at that point. So it doesn't happen often, but we just want to make sure you. And the last um, thing is, what are you going to bring? Um, it's a pretty casual conference. You're not going to see anyone, but maybe some of our keynote speakers um, in a suit and tie. So wear what you are comfortable with, and sweats are fine. Bring lots of your university logos, um, and we, we, as you saw, we have pools at both, and we've got workout. Um, We've got some sort of small gyms. And one thing that's important is in addition to everyone will probably have their phone, but have a laptop or some kind of Wi-Fi device um, because your action plan is submitted online. Um, so just having that will be really helpful. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Max, who's going to talk about what happens when you're actually at Apple. Thanks, Susie. So looking first broadly throughout the weekend, you all are going to get to see a lot of different keynote and breakout sessions that are going to cover a whole bunch of topics. We're going to talk about the impact of alcohol and cannabis on performance. We're going to talk nutrition, drug testing, hazing, mental health, and many more topics. So it's going to be broad. It's going to touch on a lot of different things that your different campuses and participants are interested in. Uh, you're also going to have great uh, networking opportunities with one another. There are great connections made between athletes, between administrators. 
we're really about that cross campus connection as you help each other build great action plans. Uh, and you're also gonna get a chance to share your ideas with us and evaluate these sessions. So when you arrive, going through the timeline a little bit of the weekend now, uh, you're gonna check in between 1.30 and four on Friday. Each team member must check in at our welcome table as well as the front desk. You're gonna fill out a quick pretest and then you'll receive your Apple swag. Uh, with your t-shirt string bag. I just saw the t-shirt designs. I'm very excited about them. You all should be too. Uh, just to note at the end here, please let us know in advance if you need to arrive on Thursday. Um, we already know people's travel plans make uh, these timelines different. So just give us a heads up. We're going to work with you and uh, make this timeline work the best for you that it can. So moving forward through Friday from four to nine, we're going to start with our first session right at four, uh, followed by dinner at 530. Uh, again, please send us a text if your timeline changes in the other direction. If you end up running late, we know January, snowstorms, delays, whatever it is, give us a heads up. We'll work with the hotel to get you fed. Just let us know. Uh, the focus of this evening is going to be the foundations of the Apple model. So Susie talked about that curriculum that's consistent from year to year. We really give you that foundation at the start. Uh, that's going to give you an understanding of the impact of alcohol and cannabis on athletic performance talking about best practices for substance misuse prevention and effective ways to teach students. We'll then have our keynote speaker, Linda Hancock, followed by, I'm very excited about this, I'm getting to host Trivia Night. We're also going to do a t-shirt swap. So anybody who's up for it, we ask that you bring a t-shirt in your own size with your school's logo, athletics, whatever it is on it, if you're interested in participating in this. And we'll send you an email reminder later on. So moving into Saturday, uh, in the morning, you're gonna get more of the Apple model, uh, moving into applications for your own school. Uh, you're gonna then take that to team meetings to discuss your campus's needs and begin making that action plan. When you move into the afternoon, you're gonna get more of those elective options that are uh, a little bit different year to year and a little more specific maybe. Uh, those breakout sessions are gonna cover all kinds of health and wellness issues. Um, We've got, you know, talking about cannabis policy, talking about healthy relationships, all kinds of things that connect to these big topics. Uh, and then you'll have more, more team meetings as your team disperses, gets to know the uh, breakouts that they're most interested in, and then come back together and see what makes the most sense for your campus. Moving into the evening uh, in Charlottesville, we have Paul Harris giving a keynote and Newport Beach, we have Aaron Davis. So two really great keynotes to wrap up our Saturday night, which we're really excited about. And then Sunday morning, we get you for a couple more hours. Um, we're going to have a timed competition of your elevator speeches. Uh, we've heard in the past that a lot of these Apple teams end up going back to campus and having to pitch these action plans and these initiatives to athletic directors, you know, whatever high level administrator it is. And they don't often get, you know, they don't get an hour to talk about it. So everybody's going to get like a minute to get on stage, get a mic and practice how to talk about your action plan. Uh, we're then going to give you some last few tips for taking Apple back home. You'll do a final team meeting to submit your completed action plan. Uh, you'll take a post test so we can see what you learned. And then you're going to complete online evaluations about what you loved about Apple, what we can improve. We're always looking to take in that feedback. So that's what happens at Apple in a nutshell. Now we're going to look at after Apple, how you take it back to campus. So these are the expectations of you as team contacts. We expect you to meet with your Apple team to implement the action plan you created at the Training Institute. Uh, we need you to complete the post Apple surveys on your progress, barriers, et cetera. This allows us to see how these action plans are getting implemented, how successfully, what we need to do going forward to continue to make them successful. Uh, and just keep us posted, keep us informed of changes to your contact information, what's going on with your plans. And like Susie mentioned, we're gonna continue to do check-in sessions with uh, team contacts as we go through the year so we can hear all the great work you're doing. So uh, we're going to open it up in a minute from people who have been before, but I want to give you a couple pieces of advice from team contacts who have written in the past. Uh, this first one said, you really need to have a team meeting before you come to Apple. It's really important to review the purpose and what to expect. That way you're not spending time at Apple dealing with confusion or overwhelmed team members. Folks also said that reviewing expectations to ascend and participate in all sessions is really important. Some more advice here, uh, come in with an open mind and listen to your student athletes. They're the cornerstone of your success if you let them honestly tell you what is truly happening and what your needs are. So 
right now, I would invite any returning team contacts, whether you want to unmute or shoot us a message in the chat. Uh, what would you have wanted to know uh, for the new schools who you've been in their shoes? What would you want to know at this stage going into Apple? All right, we've got one in the chat here. So talk it up with your SAC. I think that's a great resource for uh, recruiting students, bringing folks in uh, and informing them about all those expectations we wanna know going in. All right, I'm gonna move forward. Um, some quick reminders at the end. Uh, now is a great time to pull up your calendar and put in the one due date for everything. Uh, Thursday, November 16th is gonna be individual, individual team member registrations. Uh, that athletics department baseline assessment, which again, you really don't want to leave to the last minute because you're going to pull in a lot of pieces uh, and proposals for 30 minute presentations from those returning schools. We're really excited to have you all share your success with new folks. And now questions, feel free to, uh, if you'd like to be anonymous, you can put them into Menti here. Um, we're also totally fine if you unmute, send them in the chat, whatever works best for you. I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead, Ray. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm working with our athletics department. I'm not in athletics myself, of course, uh, but we're we're looking at bringing three or four students. But a couple of the students are involved in sports that are not NCAA sponsored. Is that problematic? Um, you have. Since the, the big requirement is that your institution must be an NCAA member institution, which I know that you are. Right. Um, and we also know that there are some that are, you've got some sports. So as long as you've got some of like that mix of students, then that's fine. Um, a related question that we often get is, do, do my student athlete, do the students all have to be student athletes? And the answer to that is no. We know, especially on smaller campuses, um, you may not have like separate policies. You know, our athletics department is really integrated with um, the rest of the campus. So if you've got somebody from maybe student government, um, that could be a great student to bring in. Um, again, to have those partnerships and that's definitely part of what the NCAA wants is not to have athletics as a little island, but um, really how they are leading and serving the rest of the campus. So great question. Thanks. Aha. And, who um, do you email? And um, Matthew, if you'll put this in the chat too, you can just email apple um, athletics at virginia.edu. If you're the team contact um, or if you look on our website, that's the, the main email that goes to actually all three of us in the office um, monitor that email. But that's where you can begin that process to say, I'd actually like that jewelry. Great question. And I think the questions that we all, we did our um, D2 only um, webinar, that one's in February, um, a couple weeks ago. And um, I think we already included the questions that came up there, we've already included in the slides. So I was trying to think of anything else. Well, with that, I'm gonna move us on again. Here's, oh, there it is too, it's on our last slide. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the recording.